The Fun Money Game. Part 2. Rising Stakes. Jack Reynolds barely had time to catch his breath before the next challenge of the Fun Money Game hit him. After his electrifying win in the first round, Jack's newfound wealth had only increased the intensity of the competition. The stakes were higher, the risk more daunting, and the opposition more cunning than ever. He knew that the game had only just begun, and the pressure was mounting. As Jack reviewed the latest financial reports on his tablet, a message flashed across the screen. Level 2 Challenge, The Corporate Takeover. Jack's heart raced. This was no longer about flipping properties or playing the stock market. This was the big leagues, a high-stakes battle for control of a multinational corporation. The rules were simple. Acquire the majority shareholding of a floundering company, restructure it, and turn it around within six months. Fail, and you lose everything you've gained so far. Jack's competition this time was Daniel Crow, a ruthless corporate raider with a reputation for tearing companies apart and selling the pieces for profit. Crow had already completed three takeovers this year, each more aggressive than the last. Jack knew he was in for the fight of his life. He spent the next 48 hours in near isolation, analyzing the balance sheets, studying the market trends, and mapping out a takeover strategy. His target was an old but prestigious manufacturing company, Talon Industries, that had been on the brink of collapse for years. Jack saw potential where others saw a sinking ship. Talon had a rich history and valuable assets, but its management was stuck in the past, unable to adapt to the changing market. If Jack could revitalize the company, it could be the comeback of the decade. But Crow was already making his move. Jack received intel that Crow had begun buying up Talon's shares through a series of offshore accounts, quietly amassing enough to challenge Jack's bid. Jack had no time to waste. He needed to act, and he needed to act fast. Jack's strategy was bold. He reached out to key shareholders, convincing them that his vision for Talon was the only way to save the company and ensure their investments wouldn't vanish. He used his charm, his knowledge of the industry, in a promise of massive returns to secure their votes. Simultaneously, he negotiated with suppliers and creditors, restructuring debts and cutting costs to stabilize the company's finances. As the shareholders' meeting approached, Jack felt the tension mount. Crow had launched a smear campaign, spreading rumors that Jack's takeover would lead to massive layoffs and the destruction of the company. Jack knew that if the shareholders believed Crow, his plan would collapse. The day of the meeting arrived. The boardroom was filled with tension as shareholders filed in, each carrying the weight of their decision on their shoulders. Jack stood confidently at the front, facing a room full of skeptical faces. Crow sat across the table, a smirk of confidence on his lips. Jack began his pitch, laying out his vision for Talon's future. He spoke of innovation, of revitalizing the brand, of expanding into new markets. He presented a detailed plan that promised not only to save the company, but to transform it into a powerhouse of the industry. When Crow took the floor, his words were sharp and cutting. He painted Jack as an inexperienced dreamer, someone who didn't have the grit to do what needed to be done to save the company. Crow's plan was simple. Strip Talon of its assets, sell off the pieces, and maximize immediate profits for shareholders. The room was silent as the final votes were cast. Jack held his breath, watching as the votes were tallied. One by one, the decisions came in. It was close, far closer than Jack had anticipated. But when the final vote was counted, Jack had done it. He had won the majority by the slimmest of margins. Crow's smirk disappeared as Jack was declared the new majority shareholder. But Jack knew the battle wasn't over. The real work was just beginning. He had six months to prove that his vision could become reality. Six months to turn Talon Industries around and cement his place as a force to be reckoned with in the fun money game. As the boardroom cleared out, Jack felt the weight of the responsibility on his shoulders. The next phase of the game was about to begin, and this time the stakes were higher than ever. Crow wasn't the type to take defeat lightly, and Jack knew he would face more challenges before the game was through. But Jack was ready. He had come too far to back down now. With Talon Industries under his control and the clock ticking, Jack set out to prove that in the world of high finance, anything was possible if you had the courage to play the game and play it well. To be continued.